Hello, everyone, and welcome um, to East Carolina University and ECU Live series as a part of the ECU New Student Orientation. My name is Katie Haycox, and I'm the Assistant Director of the One Card Office here at ECU. We appreciate you guys joining us today. Today, we're going to go over the many uses of the One Card and lots of good information about the One Card. This session will be recorded and will be archived and available on the official ACU YouTube channel in just a few days. Um, please just allow us some time to get the video captioned and uploaded, and then you can have it for your viewing pleasure. <laughs> in order to make sure that we are following accessibility guidelines, um, the archived recording uh, recorded session will be closed captioned. If further accommodations are required, please contact the Office of Disability Services. I would like to get started by running through our schedule of the time we'll be with you and introducing those I have with me. We'll talk a little bit about the one card, like I mentioned, the many uses of the card um, and how the orientation students will be getting their card. And we'll also be introducing some new features this year. Um, today I have with me um, a very special guest, Robin Hill, the Campus Program Manager for Wells Fargo and also um, our marketing uh, director, Leslie Krakel. Um, just want to mention, if you have any questions throughout the presentation, you can use the um, utilize the question and answer in the chat box, and we'll be able to um, review those questions and get those answers back to you as soon as we can. All right, let's get started. So the ACU One Card, as I mentioned, has many functions. So we'll go over the functions and uses of the One Card. Um, we'll go over the accounts on the One Card. We'll go, talk about the photo upload option um, for the orientation students, so they could, we could get their One Cards ready for them. The brand new One Card design um, that came out this summer, and the new linked bank card option. Okay. Um, so the one card is used for many things across campus. It is the official identification card for all students, staff, and faculty on campus. Um, the students will definitely want to carry that one card with them wherever they go on campus. They'll want to have it with them, of course, um, so that they can use all those campus activities. Um, they'll use their one card to check out books of the libraries. Um, they'll use the card for um, going to student health center if they get sick to need to see a doctor or need to pick up a prescription. Um, they'll use it for any check-in services on campus, um, places like the student rec center, um, the uh, counseling center, um, the advising center, career services, all of these locations like to um, check the students in with their one cards. So they'll wanna take those with them. The one card can also be used if your student is um, fortunate enough to get a job on campus, they'll use the one card to clock in and out on the time clock for Kronos. Um, so that one card is used for all of those different activities on campus. The one card will also be used for the students to go to certain events on campus. They can use their one card to pick up tickets for events such as athletic events, um, campus sponsored functions, guest lectures, um, guest music performances. Um, there are many events that go on on campus and students can, are sometimes required to have a ticket for those events. In that case, they'll take their one card to the ticket office located in the student center and be able to pick up tickets for those events. There are even some events on campus that don't require a ticket, but they will require the one card for entrance. Um, so having that one card to, you know, visit uh, or experience any of those events um, is what they'll need to get in. So speaking of getting into places, uh, the one card is also used for door access on campus. And what that means is that there are some buildings, um, some classrooms, some labs that the students might need to utilize that they'll actually use their one card um, to read on a reader right outside the door. If they have access, it will allow them into that door. There are a lot of buildings on campus where all students will get that access. So if it's a student taking classes on campus, they'll get that access to, for example, join our library so they can visit the library. 
Um, there are some other buildings that they might get access after hours um, that they would use their one card to get in as well. There are even some specific buildings and classrooms and labs, as I mentioned, that students might receive access for, um, say if they're a certain major. For example, a, an art major may receive additional access to the Jenkins Art Building so that they can access the um, rooms in that building. So there's a lot of access uh, across campus that students will use their one card for. One thing I'd like to mention um, is that the entrance for their residence halls will be with a key fob that they will be given by housing. Um, so that key fob will get them in to their residence halls. Um, and the one card is what they'll use for like the academic buildings, libraries, things like that around campus. And the last but not uh, least, uh, probably most important function of the one card is for purchases. Um, using the one card, you can make purchases all over campus. Um, there are many locations. Um, such as all the dining locations, um, the bookstore on campus, Dowdy Student Stores, um, even at the One Card office, the libraries, Student Help Center. And we'll get into all of those accounts on the One Card where they can make these purchases as well. So, another very important feature um, for the students to know about for a One Card is to use the Git website or mobile app. Um, the Git link for the Git website can be found on the One Card Office website. And the mobile app, um, anyone with an iPhone or Android phone can search for Git Mobile. Um, you can download that app, and that will be a very useful tool when classes start and you want to keep up with um, all things One Card. So with Git, um, you will be able to view your account balances. Those accounts that we'll talk about in just a minute, um, you'll be able to view all of those balances um, to see where you've used your card, how much um, you still have remaining balances on your card, all of that, uh, your transaction history. You'll also be, be able to use Git to find locations where you can use your one card. Um, if you're on campus and you're new to campus um, and you want to see where is you know, a dining location um, near me, you can actually find that information on the Git mobile app. You can also use Git to report your card lost. If you ever lose your card or you're just not 100% um, sure if it's in the wallet, if it's not, if you left it in your dorm or if you left it at home, you can always go into Git, the website or mobile app and report your card lost. It's a really good idea um, when you have funds on your card so that you make sure no one else is using your card. Um, so you can, like I said, you can go into Git to report your card lost. If you find your card, which often happens, um, you can just go back into Git and mark I found my card and it will reactivate that card. So you'll be able to continue using it. Um, another new feature um, for Git this year is that you can deposit funds um, directly through Git. So if you wanted to deposit funds, you can sign into Git um, again. You'll sign in with your Pirate ID and passphrase. So that's that same information that you use to sign into your ECU email. You'll use that to sign into Git. Um, and if you wanted to deposit funds, you can do so that way. Or if your parents or family members are kind enough uh, to want to deposit some funds for you to be able to use on campus, they can also utilize the feature where it says click here to deposit into a student's account. So if a parent or family member wants to deposit funds on um, your Bounty Bucks account, for example, they can click there. They will just need to know the student's Powered ID, which again is that first part of their um, email, um, everything before the at. Um, they'll need to know that Powered ID and the date of birth. If they have that information, they'll be good to go to make um, a deposit through Git, even without having to sign in there. All right, so again, Git is going to be a very useful tool for you when you um, start using that card on campus. Okay, so one of the accounts um, on the one card is the Bounty Bucks account. The Bounty Bucks account is managed by the one card office and it can be used for various purchases across campus. It can be used to purchase a replacement one card if you ever need one. Um, it can be used at all the dining locations 
um, as well as the Dowdy Student Stores, the bookstore on campus. Um, so you could, if you had bounty bucks, you'd be able to use those funds at any of those locations. You'll also be able to use it for prescriptions or fees at Student Health Center. Say you get a regular prescription and you wanna add funds to your bounty bucks, just so you know you have those funds set aside for that. You can um, actually add that to your bounty bucks and it'll be available and ready to use at the Student Center. You can also use bounty bucks to pay for fines and fees at locations around campus, like the libraries or parking and transportation. And then we also have some off campus merchants and retail stores that, are, um, that will allow bounty bucks purchases as well. Anywhere you see this bounty bucks accepted here sign, you know you're good to go to use those bounty bucks. There's also a list on the One Card Office website, a detailed list of all those locations for on campus and those off campus merchants. Um, so if you want to take a look at that list, you might find um, some new places that you didn't know um, accepted bounty bucks. Um, might be one of your new favorite restaurants in um, Uptown Greenville, and you could use your bounty bucks there as well. Again, if you want to deposit funds for bounty bucks, you can do so through that Git website or mobile app. And again, of course, your parents and families have um, the ability to add bounty bucks through Git as well. Another all important account on the one card is the meal plan. So meal plans are handled through dining services. There are many different meal plans as I'm sure you already know. Um, I'm sure you've already investigated meal plans and picked the perfect one for you for this semester. Um, so you probably already know about your meal plan, but just to remind you with the meal plans, you'll receive, of course, your meals that you can use in the dining halls, as well as additional bucks that can be used at dining locations, um, just as like a declining balance that you can use at any of those locations on campus. You'll sign up. Um, for your meal plan with your housing contract. So again, you may have already investigated your meal plan and know exactly what you're getting. Um, but you can also, if you're not staying on campus, you can also sign up for a meal plan through Dining Services website that's listed here. Um, if you have any questions about your meal plan, um, you'll be able to uh, contact Dining Services and they can give you information. Again, you'll also be able to see that information in Git. Um, once you sign in, you'll see your meal plan is loaded there. Um, I believe the meal plans should actually be loaded onto the accounts, uh, if not today, um, by tomorrow. So you can take a look at that information there. Uh, and if you have any questions, of course, you can follow up with Dining Services and they can help you out there as well. Great. So the last account on the one card is the bookstore account. And I love this picture uh, here of PD standing outside uh, the bookstore in the main campus student center. Um, so he's trying to show you it's a great place for you for you to visit while you're here. Um, so for the bookstore account, you can add funds to that account. You can do that through the cashier's office. If you have excess financial aid or scholarship funds, you can contact the cashier's office and ask them to move that amount over to your one card uh, or to your bookstore account on your one card. You want to make sure um, you're adding uh, about the amount you think you'll use for your books that semester. Um, and you can just have them move that over and it'll be available on your one card um, shortly after. You can use that bookstore account to make any purchase in the bookstore. So, of course, you'll want to get your books uh, for the semester, but you can also purchase school supplies, um, even new pirate gear, like a new pirate t-shirt or something you might need uh, to start up the semester. You can purchase all of that in the bookstore using that bookstore account. Okay, so something fun and new for the orientation students this year is the new photo upload option. So instructions. Um, we're emailed out to all the orientation students um, with a link for my photo um, to allow them to upload their photo and state ID so that we can verify their identity and get their card ready for them. Just a little bit about that photo upload. Um, we do ask that the students will submit a photo with a solid white background um, 
we, you know, we want to make sure that they don't have anything else in the photo with them. Um, and then it's basically a headshot. So what you would normally see for like a passport type photo, that kind of thing. We have this great graphic here that shows you um, some, some important tips about taking your photo. So please make sure that your photo is um, in color and on that solid white background. So no, you know, black and white fo um, photos, no filters, that sort of thing. Um, we wanna make sure that you're facing forward. Um, if you're not facing forward, we can't really see you as well. Um, so make sure you're facing forward on that white background. Also make sure you're the only person in the photo. Um, again, this is your identification card. So we wanna make sure we can see you well. Um, no filters, no hands or other objects in the face um, in your photo. Of course, no pets. That would uh, that would be a, an object, right? So we don't want any of that in the photo. We want that perfect shot of just your face, hopefully smiling, um, so that we know that you're happy to be here. And that'll be um, the photo that will go on to your one card. When you go in to upload your photo. Um, it will actually give you a preview of what your photo will look like on your actual one card. Um, so that's a great way to tell if you think that photo um, is going to be acceptable is how well it looks on that actual ID card. So I won't go through the all the steps um, for uploading a photo. As you see here, we have some instructions um, that have the eight steps for uploading that photo and a state ID card. I will mention um, that for the state ID card, if you will make sure that it is a valid state issued ID, um, we accept the driver's license, military ID, passport, or the state ID card issued by the DMV. It does have to be one of those um, forms of identification, and we do ask that it is um, a current ID and not expired. We understand that if it is expired in the last few months, uh, of course, doing, during um, quarantine that, you know, um, some of the DMVs were not open, you were not able to get, um, you know, that updated ID. So if it has expired in just the last few months, then we may be able to accept that. Just um, contact our office um, and we'll let you know if we can um, accept that ID that you have. But again, it does have to be one of those four, um, a driver's license, military ID, passport, or state identification card issued by the DMV. Um, if you'll visit our website um, under obtaining an ECU one card page, you'll find an awesome video that one of the orientation assistants created that shows this step-by-step -step process of uploading a photo. We did an awesome job of explaining what the photo should look like and how you move through each step. Um, so if you want to check out that video, if you need some help with uploading your photo, definitely view that video and that will give you um, those instructions. Um, also, if you have any questions, you can contact the one card office and we'll be glad to walk you through those steps as well. Um, and if all else fails, you can always come visit us um, at the one card office and we'll be able to um, take the photo for you. So just let us know if you have any questions on that photo upload and you should be good to go. All right, so once you do upload a photo, you will receive an email confirmation letting you know that your photo was received. If you, do, if you think you uploaded the photo and you do not get that confirmation email, please just try um, to upload your photo again. Once the one card office staff has reviewed your photo, you will receive either an approved email letting you know your photo was approved, or you would get an, an email letting you know that your photo was disapproved and it will give a detailed reason of why the photo was disapproved. Perhaps there um, you know, was something in the background or um, perhaps the state ID card, we couldn't see the entire image that happens sometimes. So we'll, um, send that disapproval email to you and let you know a very specific reason, which will give you the opportunity to upload again. All right, great. So once, like I said, once you get that approved email, you know you're good to go and everything's all set. Okay, so again, once you get that approved email and you know your one card is, uh, or your one card photo was accepted, you'll want to find out about picking up your one card. So some students have actually already picked up their one cards during um, the early drop off 
um, for the residence halls that housing offered. Um, so we were passing out the one cards then for those that uh, were coming for their early drop off. No worries if you um, did not attend the early drop off as the cards can be picked up all this week and all of next week. We will be in the main campus student center in room 125 and that will be Monday through Friday from 9 a.m. to 4 p.m. Um, so we will be in that location um, doing card pickup as well. So if you've already uploaded the photo, you've got that approved email, you know you're good to go, you can come pick up your card then. We also sent emails um, out to all the students that will need to pick up their card. So let them know that they can schedule a time to pick it up. Um, that way you can go ahead and say, okay, I'm coming, um, you know, I'm moving in on Thursday. I wanna go ahead and schedule, um, you know, a time around lunchtime to come pick up my card. You'll be able to do that. Um, so be sure to check your ECU email account um, as that's how we'll be um, sending those or how we have been sending out those emails. Um, so we'll send that email to you, letting you know you can schedule a time to pick up. And again, we will be in the main campus student center, room 125, um, and that's from nine to four, all this week and next week. Another exciting thing that we have to share um, is that we had a new, brand new card design this year. Um, it launched in July. Um, it looks like this uh, card you see here on your screen. So you orientation students will be some of the very first um, students to get this new card for this year. Um, we're really excited about it. We're excited to share the new design um, and we're happy that you guys get to get to see that. So with the new design, we have some new features um, for the card that we want to share as well. So we have an um, ECU has partnered with Wells Fargo to offer optional bank convenience um, with a linked ECU one card. Um, we have two websites here listed that you can check out information about it. And we also have some information sheets about the linked account um, that we can share with you when you come to pick up your card. So at this time, I'm going to turn it over to my special guest. Uh, Robin with Wells Fargo and let her explain a little bit more about the linked account and what that means. Okay, Robin. Well, thank you so much, Katie, and we're very excited. So as Katie stated that you as incoming um, students right now are some of the first to get the new design, which is a fantastic design. You're also some of the first to be able to have these new features that are available. Um, so one thing that you'll notice um, when you get your new ECU card on the back of the card, there's actually two stripes. Um, one of the stripes is your ECU stripe where Katie told you the different benefits, but the second stripe is actually a stripe that gives you convenient banking access. So you get to enjoy from your card, one card access with these additional benefits. So how it kind of works is whenever you open an account with Wells Fargo um, and you open an everyday account with Wells Fargo, then, and you connect your ECU card to that account, you are able to do pin based purchases with your card. So, for instance, you're driving around town, you see a Wells Fargo ATM, you can actually slide your ECU one card into that ATM, put in your pin number, and get your money out of your Wells Fargo account. How cool is that, right? You don't have to carry around two cards. In addition to that, say you're driving around town. I want to go to the grocery store because I'm really hungry and need to buy groceries. Oh my gosh, I forgot my debit card at home. No worries. I have my student ID on me. I can walk into the grocery store, slide my student ID and put in my PIN number and make that purchase. So it definitely provides a lot of convenience. But in addition to that convenience, there are some great benefits, which I want to tell you a little bit about today. So whenever you link that student ID card to an everyday account with Wells Fargo, one, we waive the monthly service fee. So there's no um, minimum balance requirement. So we're using your debit card so many times. We waive that monthly service fee. We also allow you to go to a non-Wells Fargo ATM four times a month, and Wells Fargo is not going to charge you for using a non-Wells Fargo ATM. I always, though, like to kind of put this little disclaimer out there. Be aware that if, say, for instance, you go to a Bank of America ATM, Wells Fargo is not going to charge you. There's a great possibility that bank's going to charge you on their end. 
Another feature is that we do waive the overdraft fee, the overdraft protection fee. That's that fee that we charge for moving money from savings into checking. And we also allow for one incoming domestic or international wire fee. And we waive one of those. And then lastly, if you happen to go into the negative and have an overdraft fee placed on your account, we actually will waive one overdraft fee per calendar month. So those are some great additions um, and great benefits that really enhance your account and set you apart. And one of the great things is Wells Fargo is the only bank that offers this with the ECU relationship. So you say to yourself, so Robin, how do I even get this started? What do I need to do? Um, it's really quite easy. Um, so you actually can visit your local Wells Fargo and on the screen in front of you, um, underneath the fabulously designed ECU card, you will actually see, um, it says link your ECU one card. Visit that web address, the wellsfargo.com slash locator to be able to make an appointment because right now in the COVID environment, we're only allowing bank um, customers in by appointment. You've got to bring in that ECU one card um, and meet with a banker and they can either set up your new everyday checking account, or if you already have a relationship with Wells Fargo, all they're gonna do is literally go in there and type in that number, that new um, student ID number, and connect that card, and bam, you have these great benefits. So we're extremely excited um, for this relationship uh, and extremely excited for you as you begin um, as a, a new student. And please let us know if there's any questions and I will put in the chat box my email address. You're more than welcome to reach out to me if you have any questions. So back to you, Katie, thanks for the time today. Great, thank you so much, Robin. Um, like she said, we're very excited about this new partnership. Um, we know it's new. So if you have any questions, um, like Robin said, she's gonna share her email, um, her information. But if you have any questions here, you can always um, ask those as well. All right. Oh, <laughs> as we're talking about questions, <laughs> if you have any questions, um, here is the one card office information. Um, I do want to go over a few frequently asked questions that we've gotten all summer long, um, just to share with everyone, uh, because I know that's, um, you know, those are things that are on everyone's mind. So one of the questions we've received is how much does that first one card cost? So the first one card does cost $10, but the good thing is it's included in those um, orientation fees. So if you've done the new student or online orientation, um, you paid for that, you've already paid for that first one card. So there's no fee that we have to collect when you pick up your card, um, you've already taken care of that. Another question we've received is what if I have not uploaded my photo yet? You will still have time to upload your photo and your state ID for us to verify. Um, so we do ask that you go ahead and take care of that um, before you need your card so that we can get it ready for you. But you will have time um, to go ahead and upload that photo. Like I mentioned, you can um, go to myphoto.ecu.edu or you can go to our website to check out that great tutorial on how to upload your photo. And then you can upload that photo for us in a state ID so that we can get everything verified for you. We'll get your card ready and we'll get it printed and ready for you and we'll send you an email letting you know it's ready for pickup so that you can schedule a time to come by um, the student center if it's this week or next week um, to pick up that card. So you will still have time to do that. Um, you can just go ahead and take care of that and we'll email you when your one card is ready. Another question um, that we've received, um, you know, via email through the summer, but also as students have begun to pick up their cards is what if I do lose my card? How do I get a replacement one card? Uh, and that's no problem that happens every year. So, uh, you know, we know how that is um, when you're moving and everything, you, you could misplace it and need to go ahead and get a replacement as soon as you get here or as soon as you get back. So we wanna go ahead and give you that information now. So what you could do to get a replacement one card is visit the one card office website um, that's listed here. Um, you can go to uh, obtaining EC one card um, for replacement cards, and I'll give you that link there to actually pre order your one card. Um, so you'll go in, um, fill out the information to pre order that card. You can actually pay that $15 replacement card fee um, online through our U store. And the same process, um, you know, if you 
chose to upload a new photo, you could do so. And again, we'll email you once the card is ready to be picked up. Um, so that's some important information to share there. Just a few quick reminders um, the, uh, to download the Git mobile app um, so that you can keep up with all things OneCard once you get to campus. And another is that you will be receiving that email um, about scheduling a time to come pick up your OneCard once it is ready. So again, if you have any questions, um, you can always um, contact the OneCard office. Um, you can email us at onecard at ecu.edu or give us a call at 252-328-2673. I've also listed the OneCard office website here as there's lots of information about everything we've discussed today, including the, um, some of that Wells Fargo information and um, our information for Facebook and Twitter if you want to follow us there for any announcements um, or any further information. All right, great. Well, um, I'll just check really quick to see if we have any questions. And if not, then I think we are all set. All right, great. Um, as I mentioned, if you have any specific questions, just contact us. Or um, if you have any specific questions about the Wells Fargo and how to link your account, you can always contact Robin with her information she shared as well. Thank you all so much. Um, for joining us today. As a reminder, this session has been recorded and will be archived. Um, we will be archiving a copy of the recording, which will be available on the official ECU YouTube channel. We hope you'll join us for um, the remainder of the ECU live sessions. Feel free again to contact um, our office if you have any questions or need any help with uploading your photo or getting your card um, to start the new semester. Thank you all so much and welcome to ECU. We're excited to have some new parents. Have a great day.